students, welcome to the episode 3 of our live stream series I am a freshman. In order to prepare architectures and the civil engineering students for upcoming years in Jeju, we would like to organize a talk show today named Ready to Become Architectures and Civil Engineering Students. So to join us today, I would like to introduce our special guests from Vietnamese and German University. First, I would like to introduce Dr. George Franker. Academic Coordinator of Civil Engineering Program. Yes. Thank you too. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jörg Franke. As you have just heard, I am working already since a long time at VGU, being originally a German. And since recently, I became the coordinator for our new study program in Civil Engineering. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jörg Franke. And the second special guest is Dr. Leti Tu Hương, Academic Coordinator of Architecture Program. Now, I would like to introduce Dr. Leto Yitu Hương. Sorry, but uh, Dr. Hương will join us remote from Thailand. Sorry, Dr. Hương, can you hear me? Hello, good, after, good, good evening, everyone. Yeah, my name is Hương. I'm an architect, and I have been working at Biju for seven years already. And I will be the coordinator of the architecture uh, programs. It's nice to meet all of you, and I'm sorry that uh, currently I stay abroad, cannot join you on site. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hu, and thank you for being with us uh, today. So let's not be waiting for any longer. I would like to put the first question for uh, Dr. Joe Franker and Dr. Hu about uh, some points of the civil engineering and architect program. So would you please share for all the audience here? the Vietnamese uh, and international market demand for the architectures and uh, civil engineers. Yeah, sure. So I would like to invite uh, Dr. Joe Franker first. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, home, not ladies first this time. Um, yeah, sure. I would like to talk a bit more about the civil engineering aspect. Of course, everybody knows this is very closely related to the architecture. They are closely working together. And um, well, Vietnam has seen a nice growth over the last years. It has been reduced now a little bit due to COVID, but it is foreseen to continue growing the construction sector. And there is a lot of constructions needed in the commercial constructions part, the residential constructions, industrial constructions, and of course, big topic in Vietnam is infrastructure. 
the government is pushing very strongly the development of the transport for sea, air, rail and also road traffic. So there will be in the future a lot of construction works going on which need engineers that supervise and conduct these construction services and processes. And also in the residential buildings area, there is still a lot of people in Vietnam living on the countryside, wanting to move to the urban areas, the big urban areas in Vietnam. So there is a big need also to provide sufficient residential buildings for these people. And therefore, in the future, there is also a good market potential for that. So we estimated that around roughly a year, there will be a demand of let's say 800 to 1,000 civil engineers per year in the future, in the coming years, to meet the demand in the construction business in Vietnam. Well, it sounds like a very big market, and it's in a high demand for the civil engineers in Vietnam and in the local. So, how about architects' uh, demand for the international and in Vietnam? So, can Dr. Hương, can you share with us? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Thu. Uh, in addition to Dr. Short mentioned about the construction industry, uh, not only the issues of like urbanization and the construction market uh, expand very quickly in the last uh, 20 years up to recently. And you can see even though Vietnam has quite a lot of uh, architect and engineering as well as, as well as the workers working in the construction labor um, market, we still have a high demand for the architects with um, technology, with uh, more skill, and especially with the knowledge that can work in the international environment. So far, the um, ratio of uh, architect per uh, resident of uh, Vietnam is uh, one to 1,000. Um, this, is, this is the number for architect per inhabitant even though it's quite high. But uh, our surveys in the last uh, three or four years showing that the domestic architect still need the um, additional skill in order to adapt with the international environment. Um, and the demands, uh, I, like Dr. Jot already mentioned, it is a high demand for the construction work because of the expansion of city, of the um, uh, buildings, in the different uh, functions. And so far, our study show that uh, for the construction industry, it increased quickly about 10% per year. So we see a very high demand for the um, construction team, including both architect and civil engineer, as well as the workers. And that's the reason why I think the program will be uh, in the need for the new market. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hung. So, if the construction market is rising year 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 by year in Vietnam and in local, so it also demands a very big workforce and even a new skill for this workforce to join and to compete with the international market. So, uh, we come to the next question: Is that uh, so? Would you please share introduce about architecture and civil engineering program in Vietnam? And what makes this program innovative compared to other similar programs in Vietnam? So it's this time I would like to invite our uh, beautiful lady here, Dr. Hương. So can you share, introduce the architecture program? Here with the story about the target of our programs. Uh, since the market in Vietnam, we have quite a lot of uh, university, both public and private provide the training in architecture programs. Um, the surveys with different company in 2006, uh, 2016 and 17 show that um, the, the, the graduate in those programs still need to have like some Can you hear? management, um, some, some other um, experience to work in the team in the company. So normally the graduate in other university, when they work for a company, they still need certain training. And for this, the, the program at uh, Visual, we plan to have a more comprehensive uh, training for those uh, students. 
um, not only that, in terms of skill, uh, this is a, a kind of like interdisciplinary study, not only design, uh, construction technology, uh, but also soft skill in presenting, communicating the ideas or the, the, the project. And additionally, it is will be the, for sure, you, know, you all know that it is an international granted degree from, for, for architecture program. It will be the Anhan University of Applied Science. Right? The language of teaching will be English. Right? It is an international standard uh, program. Yes. Yes, thank you for your sharing. So uh, before we uh, let the, Dr. Jo Franke have the discussion, so I would like to invite you to watch the clips of the architectures and the civil engineering in the Namibia German University. Yes, please. Chương trình đào tạo do Đại học Khoa học ứng dụng Anh Hát cung cấp đã được tổ chức ASIAN của Đức kiểm định với thời gian học kéo dài 6 học kỳ. Đại học Anh Hát mang đến cho người học chương trình nghiên cứu và giảng dạy đổi mới với chất lượng quốc tế. Điểm nổi bật của Đại học Anh Hát là sự kết hợp chặt chẽ giữa lý thuyết và thực hành thông qua các dự án, đồ án, các học kỳ quốc tế trong suốt khóa học. Trọng tâm đào tạo của ngành kiến trúc của trường là thiết kế, kỹ thuật, kết cấu và một số khía cạnh của quy hoạch đô thị. Uh, so uh, we continue with our discussion. So please, Dr. Joe Franke, can you introduce the program for civil engineering yes, of I'm Vietnamese German University? I'm happy to do that. Um, Dr. Hung didn't say it, but um, also the partner university for the civil engineering program is like the partner university for the architecture program, the University of Applied Sciences, and therefore naturally more practically oriented and um, from its founding character providing the skills that were talked already about. Our partner is the Biberach University of Applied Sciences. Biberach is a small city with 33,000 inhabitants in the southwest of Germany, roughly between Freiburg and Munich. And the university is relatively young. It has been founded in 1964, now has 2,500 students and 17 study programs. The employees are 85 professors that are teaching in these study programs, 210 administrative technical employees, and 340 additional lecturers. And the Faculty of Civil Engineering, this is for civil engineering our partner, Specifically, Faculty of Civil Engineering and Project Management is the largest faculty at the University of Biberach, and it has 800 students currently in four bachelor and three master programs. What I would like to point out, we are very happy and proud of our partner faculty because this partner faculty has just won the first rank in the German university ranking of universities of applied sciences in civil engineering and due to their relation to industry and their laboratory equipment they have been ranked first position and in the last years they were always top 10 within the universities of applied sciences and we of course at VGU will benefit from that and the study program is like typical German bachelor program, three years. You know, at VGU, we have one additional year, the foundation year. We talk about that in a few minutes. And the study program, being from a University of Applied Sciences, is deeply rooted in practical applications. But this is built on a foundation, solid foundation, like it should be for civil engineering of scientific knowledge which the students are taught. And of course, there is, as you will hear in a few minutes when we give you more details, also a sufficient amount of soft skills which are becoming more and more important also in the construction industry delivered by our partner university. Yeah, thank you for the sharing. So before we jump into the next session, so please watch the clip for the civil engineering in the Demi and German university.
Chương trình đào tạo cử nhân, ngành kỹ thuật xây dựng tại Đại học Việt Đức được liên kết với trường Đại học Khoa học ứng dụng Biberac, Cộng hòa Liên bang Đức và được kiểm định quốc tế bởi tổ chức ASIIN và EURACE. Tại VGU, sinh viên được trang bị tiếng Anh và kỹ năng mềm ngay trong năm học đại cương để có thể theo đuổi chương trình học quốc tế với các giảng viên hàng đầu tuyển Đức và Việt Nam. Nhà trường cung cấp cơ sở vật chất và phòng lab tốt nhất, sử dụng nhiều công nghệ hiện đại hàng đầu trong ngành. Thêm vào đó, chương trình học gắn liền với thực tế, giúp sinh viên phát triển được những kỹ năng thực tiễn trên cơ sở kiến thức khoa học có được. Sinh viên VGU cũng được tham gia nhiều hoạt động thực tập và tham quan thực tế tại công trường xây dựng, cũng như có cơ hội học tập trao đổi và học kỳ ở Đức. Tấm bằng về kỹ thuật xây dựng sẽ mở ra vô vàn những cơ hội về nghề nghiệp trong các công ty xây dựng, các phòng kỹ thuật cũng như trong các cơ quan nhà nước. Hãy cùng chúng tôi xây dựng tương lai trên nền tảng vững chắc tại VGU. We come back with our live stream today, so we would like to change the atmosphere a little bit. Yeah, instead of answer the question, I would like to put uh, some mini games that the audiences, the parents, and students can have a chance to win back, uh, some gift from VGU. The gift is the backpacks from VGU. So I would like to ask the technical team, you can raise uh, the mini game here, please. Okay, the rule will be very easy. So you message your answers and on the live stream and uh, follow the Facebook Vietnamese German University and share the live stream on your Facebook wall. Yes, and the most accurate and the fastest answer will be selected. So are you ready for the first question? Okay, the first question is that, so what are the names of the German partner University of Civil Engineering and Architecture program? The answer A, P Civil Engineering, the Goethe University, Architect with the Leipzig University. Answer B, Civil Engineering by Parex University of Applied Sciences. Architectures in the Anhalt University of Applied Sciences. Now answer C, Civil Engineering with the Technical University of Darmstadt. And Architect in Ruhr University Bochum. And answer D, the Civil Engineering Technical University of Berlin. And the Architect, the Fugwagen University. So you please select the most accurate answer and the passage one will be granted the special gift from VGU. Yes, so in the meantime, uh, parents and the student can put some question regarding the two programs here, that's the civil engineering and the architecture. Yes, I've seen, I have seen some of the first answer, please. So more. Hopefully correct answer. Maybe ten points. I know. I should know. So I think we let more some couple of seconds, so and we will decide the winner. So, so Dr. Jock Franke, can you give us the answer, please? The correct answer of A, B, C, or D was number B. Of course, we have Biberach University of Applied Sciences and Anhalt University of Applied Sciences as the partners for civil engineering and architecture. Yeah, thank you. So the correct answer is answer B. So congratulate who that uh, put the, the answer B for this question. So please contact us to receive the special gift. Uh, and more questions and more media game will come later in our live stream. So we will be back with our discussion about architect and civil engineering today. So we have the first question for Dr. Hương and Dr. George Franker. So would you please share the studying subjects of each program? And are there any field trips and training available for students? Since practical knowledge are very necessary for students in their future work. So I would like to invite the job pointers, so please. Okay, thank you very much. I will start with the special construction that we have at Vietnamese German University. 
our students have a so-called foundation year before they start in their technical studies, which is the study program that is offered by our, our partner university. And the foundation year is organized in responsibility of VTU itself. What we are teaching there is, first of all, English. That's the main focus that we have because you heard that our programs are all taught in English. So it is very necessary that the students have sufficient English qualification and also the specific vocabulary for the field of studies that they do. Therefore, we are preparing them for IELTS whenever they still need it and did not yet pass the necessary qualification in the language exam IELTS. Then we are teaching them to present, to write academic notes and reports and also to do note taking so that they can very well study afterwards. The engineering English that they learn for our students Two programs are related to architecture and to civil engineering, so the normal vocabulary will be taught to them. Then we have some basic science subjects for the civil engineering program. We want to bring them to the level of a German high school degree that will comprise mathematics lectures, including statistics, physics, and chemistry, so that the students are well prepared based on the German high school degree level that they normally need. We also offer them some basic programming skills that is a benefit here as compared to Germany. So the Germans are sometimes envying us that our students learn better programming than their German students do that. And we will give them already a short introduction into technical drawing and computer aided design software, which they can then refine during their studies afterwards. And at the end, they are doing a civil engineering and after this foundation year for civil engineering, there is the first purely practical part of the study program. That's an eight week basic internship where students have to go to construction companies and ideally work on a construction site for eight weeks to experience and learn about what is expecting them after their studies in their work life. And then the study program is structured roughly three more years, six semesters in three big parts. The first is the scientific engineering foundations that are laid down there. There is additional mathematics that is necessary. Then they will have building physics. They have all the mechanics, the construction theory that they need, geoinformation systems, future IT and communication lectures will be given, geotechnical lectures, and <coughs> um, yeah, that's the main thing that they have in the first year basic science. Then they're getting the civil engineering basics, very standard, that is uh, reinforced concrete, steel construction. Then they will have statics and a little bit of introduction into urban water management, hydraulics, traffic engineering. And the last year is foreseen for the specialization. The program will start with only one specialization, which is structural engineering. So the students will learn additional aspects of reinforced country, steel construction, and so on. There is a big practical part in the last year. Every semester, there is a big study project where students have to work on a real life project and have to deliver a solution. This work is done as teamwork because later on, it's a highly interdisciplinary work at the construction side too. So students will need to work as a team, and that's what they learn in these projects. Altogether, every module element is accompanied by exercises. So students will have guided solving of problems. And we have, I checked it just before this live stream again, we have for nearly 50% of the credit points, we have small reports and uh, project work to be done by the students. So this makes it a really very practically oriented study program for civil engineering. Yeah, thank you for Dr. George Franke. And before we go with uh, Dr. Hương, we have uh, a question that I think that Dr. Hương can answer together with her prof. The question is that how about the drawing subject and how we study this at VGU? So Dr. Hung, so can you answer this question too and together with your sharing about the study subject or program and any training uh, possibilities for the architect student? 
So please, Dr. Hương. Yes, thank you. So in addition to what um, subject, the on the subject, Dr. Jock already mentioned for uh, foundation year, we also provide uh, two drawing subject for the architecture student. Uh, that is uh, technical drawing and architecture drawing. So while technical drawing focus more on the drawing standard, the size, the projection, um, the, the skill in the basic technical drawings, uh, the architecture drawing will focus more on the art, the hand, hand drawing skill, uh, those basic knowledge about the color, decoration, the um, uh, presentation skill, for, for art, um, communication skill, visual arts, those kind of knowledge will be provided in the drawing subject. Uh, that we try to support the foundation year students to have basic skill in both technical science and art science in order to move further to the second year of study. Uh, do you want me to go into details of the study program of art also? Yes, please. Yes, so that's what I mentioned for the, the, the foundation year. That we have the drawing subject, also for the physics, mathematics, that Dr. Short already mentioned, and other language subject will be the same for foundation year. Um, and in addition to this, for the first year, we also, that's what I'm thinking, we try to bring the student to have the basic knowledge about the architecture, what is architectures, and there will be a field trip for students to visit the building, the city, to have the ideas. Uh, for the main years of study from the second to the fourth year, we have six semesters, and the subject will be divided into four main courses. The first is the design subject, and this is a very basic and the most important subject in the program. Uh, we have uh, different design project, a studio project for students. Uh, the second group will be the theory models that we provide the knowledge about the history of architecture, a uh, theory of design, design principle, those kind of knowledge for, for students. Uh, we have the art models, right, like drawing, like the sculpture uh, to improve the skill of architecture student. And the last group will be the science and technical group that are basic. Uh, other university in Vietnam also, we have this uh, subject in terms of construction technology, in terms of um, uh, climate laboratory, the um, structural design. Uh, some other uh, technical matters about the technical system of building will be integrated in those models. And similar to the civil engineering program, in the last semester, we also have the project, uh, the graduation project as a thesis, and then the presentation for, for, for those uh, graduation projects. Uh, more importantly, that's what I want to mention here is the skill. That's what I mentioned from the early beginning about the shop skill for students. The language will be the first year, but throughout the second, fourth, second, third, and fourth year, the shop skill will be improved through the presentation of each studio project. Uh, we have separate subject for the presenting and communicating skill for students also in the last year. This is very important for students in order to present their design make the audience or the clients understand about the ideas and design so far. And last but not least, about the practical experience and a field trip uh, for each subject. This is a German style in, in each module. Right? The lecturer try to create a field trip to let the student, for instance, the field trip for the site visit, site selection, the visit of a building, the field trip for the construction site that student will learn from site. Uh, for me, I would prefer to have some extra activities also for students to, to, to join some competition with other university. And also maybe it's an international field trip that it can do. I will make it for students to, to join hand with other university abroad. 
Uh, also, just to let you know that I'm currently teaching in, in Thailand in, in the School of Architecture also. And I see that compared to what I learned in Vietnam before, because I used to be the lecturer, the lecturer in Vietnam also. And when I teach abroad, I see that for them, they have more hand-on activities, right? Design, build, hand-on, right? Practical experience for students. Yeah. Then I, I hope this program will, will bring that to the student. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, Dr. Hương. Uh, so beside this question, there are some questions from students that they want to learn. Are there any uh, laboratory in VGU for the uh, civil engineering? and uh, architecture program too. Do we have the equipment for the better teaching for them or for the training? So can you share with the audiences if we have such state-of-the-art equipment or not? Sure, we have state-of-the-art equipment. That's the benefit of having a very new program, which has new investments into the necessary laboratory. I told you in the beginning, one of the reasons why our partner faculty is the number one is that the students and the employers that were ranking them said that they have a very good equipment concerning laboratories. And uh, we designed with them our laboratories here because they expect us to deliver the same work in the laboratories like they are doing in Germany. And we just set up brand new uh, lab for reinforced concrete experiments which also could be a lab that can be used by the architecture students when they have their lectures on building materials. They also learn about building materials and there they can get some hand-on experiments in this. We have a special lab for road traffic. There's uh, mostly about bitumen and asphalt experimental equipment, latest experimental equipment available and a soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering lab for the civil engineers. I'm very proud that we have the latest and I guess it's the most modern uh, laboratory on building information modeling in Vietnam, but actually it's a number of computers, high-end computers with uh, the software that is needed and to train our students into building information modeling, a very important topic nowadays where digitalization in any branch is increasing at a very fast pace nowadays and we have the corresponding virtual and augmented reality equipment available for that so that we can really do a very futuristic planning on augmented reality service in building planning and also afterwards the surfacing and we just i guess this week we received it a 3d laser scanner that can be used exterior and interior and we can use that. And this laboratory, the building information modeling laboratory that also will be used to uh, train students in computer aided design and structural simulation software. This is something that the architecture students can use as well. And thank you, Dr. Joe Franke. So Dr. Hung, do we have any lab for the architecture students? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Short, for sharing the information. Uh, for us, actually, I believe this will be the, the most uh, modern lab in the training program, in the architecture training program in Vietnam also, that we learn from the German programs. We learn, when we make this program, we learn from different universities in Germany and see that they have several labs, several workshops for students to learn, right? In addition to those like computer labs, the material labs, the BIM, the building modeling, the, the information modeling lab, like Dr. Short mentioned. Uh, for architecture programs, we also have the good lab, the still good workshop or still workshop, right? Uh, with a lot of uh, tech equipment, right? we already installed, and I believe it's already arrived to our wooden uh, workshop and then the still workshop, right? The, um, we have different, for example, we have different machine for making the model, right? From the form, from the wood, from the steel, from the metal. Right? We have the three D printers. We have the laser cut printers. Everything to support for the process of making the model for architecture. And I believe students will have a chance to to practice and then to learn 
from the three dimensional design. Right. During my time, architecture is hard because we learn from paper two dimensional. But this day, with the equipment, with the workshop like this, students can learn from the study model, from the single piece of wood, single piece of metal or paper, make the model in the three dimensional, and it could be more excellent learner learning. Thank you for your sharing, yeah, Doctor Hu. So now we can have a chance to see the real equipment by the clip that we just made this afternoon. So please, can you show us the clip of the laboratory for architects and civil engineering program? Chào mừng các bạn đến với trường Đại học Việt Đức. Thì hôm nay chúng ta sẽ tham quan một trong những phòng thí nghiệm vô cùng thú vị tại trường, đó là phòng thí nghiệm dành cho ngành kỹ thuật xây dựng. Nếu như các bạn suy nghĩ là kỹ thuật xây dựng là những ngành chúng ta thường phải thực tập ở công trường được là nhiều thì đôi lúc các bạn chưa chuẩn đâu. Tại trường học Việt Đức, ngành kỹ thuật xây dựng chúng ta có rất là nhiều phòng thí nghiệm hiện đại khác nhau và một trong những phòng thí nghiệm thú vị và hiện đại nhất tại trường đó là phòng thí nghiệm VIM, tức là diện tắt của chữ Building Information Modeling Laboratory. Đây là phòng thí nghiệm về xây dựng kết cấu của một công trình. Nào, hãy cùng theo tôi để xem phòng thí nghiệm này có những cái thiết bị nào và công dụng nó dùng làm gì nhé. Chào, chào các bạn, ở đây là thầy Nguyễn Tấn Tiên, là giảng viên của trường đại học Việt Đức ngành kỹ thuật xây dựng. Thì chào thầy, thì khi mà tôi tới đây thì tôi thấy rất là ấn tượng với hai cái màn hình TV này. Không biết hai màn hình TV này mới làm gì? À, cái hai cái màn hình này ngoài việc giảng dạy cho cái phòng bim á, thì hai cái màn hình này dùng để triển khai cái mô hình kính thực tế ảo, mô hình thực tế ảo của cái mô hình bim kia mô model là hình 3D là anh muốn trải nghiệm với nó thì anh sử dụng cái này kết hợp với lại kính thực tế ảo. À rất là thú vị đó các bạn ạ. À. Chúng ta hai với hai một hình kích thước lớn như thế này không biết màn hình này bao nhiêu inch vậy anh? À mỗi cái, mỗi cái màn hình này là kích thước 82 inch. À với các màn hình 82 inch này chúng ta sẽ được trải nghiệm cái công trình mà chúng ta sẽ thấy cái mô hình chúng ta sẽ thấy xây dựng thấy rất là rõ nhé. Và ngoài ra thì mình cũng thấy một cái dãy à, máy tính nó rất là hiện đại và sắp xếp nó cũng khá là kỳ lạ như thế này thì không biết là tại sao mà mình lại sắp xếp hai màn hình TV như thế này mà thì tiên à đầu tiên á là à, mỗi cái CPU sẽ có hai màn hình dùng để phần thiết kế cái mô hình pin thì hai cái màn hình thì rất là tiện lợi cho việc một bên là thiết kế một bên anh có thể tham khảo tài liệu hoặc là anh chia sẻ cái màn hình để làm việc hiệu quả hơn à, cái, ngoài ra thì cũng muốn nói thêm là cái cấu hình cho cái, cái phòng pin trong mỗi cái CPU này rất là mạnh À, cũng biết cấu hình này nó như thế này là là ừ. gồm có hai cái cặp màn hình RTX 52 và cái RAM là 64 à. với cấu hình này tôi tôi nghĩ là các bạn có thể là chiến cái game xuất sắc nhất nhưng mà các bạn đừng quên đây là phòng thí nghiệm một phòng thí nghiệm cơ về kỹ thuật xây dựng nhé à, thì hai màn hình này như các bạn thấy là mình sử dụng trên một cái đơn vị CPU vì thế là các bạn hoàn toàn có khả năng là vừa có thể là nhìn cái hình ảnh của mình thứ hai nữa mình có thể là vừa cái phân tích hình ảnh của mình ở, ở bên đây thì nó rất là thuận tiện cho cái việc học tập của mình đúng không thầy tiên à mà không mình thấy cái hình cái phòng này hình như nó quen quen không? Có à cái đây chúng ta là vì chúng ta đang đứng 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 đúng không thầy thầy tiên à đúng rồi đây chính là cái phòng này mà dùng mà cái máy quét uh, laser 3D scanner là phải cái máy này à, mình quét à. sau sau khi đây là kết quả sau khi quét của cái máy này và import import cho lao vào cái software không biết cái máy này dùng để làm gì mình có thể giới thiệu sơ cho các bạn này. sinh viên sắp tới đại học chuyên ngành được à xin giới thiệu đây là máy rất đặc biệt của Laycam tên gọi là 3D laser scanner máy này dùng để quét tọa độ của các điểm của một công trình ví dụ như mình có một cái công trình hiện hữu và mình muốn à, mô đồ nó lại y chang giống thực tế thì mình dùng cái máy này thì máy này sẽ xuất ra những điểm point cloud à, và những cái điểm point cloud nó mình dùng để mô đồ thành một công trình với với cái sai số mà tối đa là khoảng 2 mm wow có một cái sai số rất nhỏ trong cái việc xây dựng các bạn ạ. À. Thì ra cái máy này chúng ta dùng để chúng ta có thể là mô phỏng lại một công trình hiện hữu đang có và chúng ta không cần thiết chúng ta phải chụp những tấm hình hoặc là chúng ta phải sử dụng cái bản vẽ hiện hữu nữa. Nhưng mà với cái chiếc thiết bị rất là nhỏ như thế này thôi và cực kỳ hiện đại chúng ta sẽ dựng lại được cái mô hình và cái không gian và cái cấu trúc chúng ta đang đứng nó như thế nào. Ví dụ như chúng ta muốn đo kích thước từ cái khoảng cách dầm hay là những cái ống nước đường điện ở cái tầng hầm ví dụ 
thì thông thường mình muốn dừng lại á, mình phải lấy tay mình đo từ này cao trên cao bao nhiêu nhưng mà đây không cần thiết ở đây nó sẽ quét cho tất cả cái điểm với sai số rất là thấp cũng như là có thể là nó chụp hình chụp hình với chất lượng rất là cao để khi mà import import uh, vô cái cái máy á, cho vô cái software á, thì mình có thể dừng được chính xác tuyệt đối hoặc gần như tuyệt đối à, tuyệt với sai số rất là thấp vậy cái máy này chắc là hỗ trợ cho những cái việc kỹ sư xây dựng tương lai nó rất là nhiều và chắc chúng tiết kiệm công sức đúng không thông thường thì cái thiết bị này dùng cho ở ở các nước trên thế giới thì thường là dùng trong các bằng vẽ hồng công hoặc là anh mua đồ những cái cái nào dùng để nghiên cứu hoặc là dùng trong việc trong du lịch đó, có thể mô hình lại được cái khu vực mà anh muốn giống như thực y chang tế hoặc là dùng cái này để mua đồ để khi mà ví dụ anh muốn trải nghiệm thực tế ảo một công trình thực tế thì mình có thể dùng cái thiết bị như này không biết cái quý thiết bị nó nhỏ nhỏ thế này cỡ một cái hộp thế này thì chắc trị giá chắc cũng nhỏ lắm đúng không thầy tự tin nhỉ nhìn nhìn nó nhỏ vậy thôi nhưng mà chắc là nó không nhỏ đâu à. À... không biết cái trị giá cái này bao nhiêu nhỉ à, thì khoảng uh, theo tỷ giá thì ở việt ở việt nam thì trường mua cái này thầy giá tầm khoảng 5 tỷ ồ oh, các bạn nghe rồi đấy <cười> 5 tỷ đồng cho một thiết bị là các bạn đã đầu tư cho chúng ta một cái công việc học tập đó và chúng ta sẽ thấy rằng với cái kịch kỹ sư xây dựng nó không phải các bạn học những cái vấn đề nó rất là ok không phải trộn hồ không phải trộn bữa nhưng mà chúng ta được đầu tư những thiết bị vô cùng hiện đại ví dụ như chiếc máy dựng 3D tọa độ này hoặc là những cái màn hình máy tính có thể là giúp chúng ta hình dung rõ hơn về những cái cấu trúc xây dựng và nó một cái nhìn trực quan hơn và vô cùng hiện đại à, chắc cảm ơn thầy tiên ha và chắc sẽ gặp lại thầy tiên trong những cái phòng thí nghiệm tiếp theo à, là cái đó hả chúc thầy sẽ làm việc Yeah, thank you. Uh, I I think that the, I found this clip very interesting. <laughs> yes. So uh, now we have to know about what we study for the architectures and for the civil engineering already. So now we come back to our discussion today. So would you please share the career path for the architectures or the civil engineering uh, graduate and what is the qualification of unsuccessful architects and civil engineers? So, well, the, if I shall start, yes. the, the degree will be granted by the German University, so you're receiving your bachelor degree, which is a Bachelor of Engineering from the Partner University in Germany, and this is an engineering degree, so afterwards you can work as an engineer. The qualification that we have, which is also <coughs> highlighted by the up to now only German graduates that we have, is that they are very happy about this highly practical education that they experience. So people that afterwards went into industry didn't find it very difficult to immediately start to work or to easily get the additional knowledge that they were still missing from their studies that they had. And the important thing is also that this study program gives a really very broad overview. So students don't only learn about the hard uh, engineering parts, but they have to learn about construction management, they even learn about international construction management in their study program and all taught in a way that the people who teach it uh, did it in industry just a few years ago before they went to university to become a professor. So the, uh, the graduates are very well prepared because they have a well-founded knowledge in the recent latest aspects of civil engineering, what they need, including the IT part, which we have just seen, with new materials then there. Then another keyword is, of course, sustainability. That means the students are very well aware of uh, green building standards and how they can implement it in their daily work and in their design and they can work in interdisciplinary teams and uh, the good thing is when they start at VGU they are multi-language uh, students so they can work also in international teams and uh, have a holistic thinking about the problems can communicate well and um, they know about yeah digitalization <coughs> that's what they learn with us too then there most likely it is like you do not experience it directly in your first job because industry is sometimes lagging a little bit behind but they are very well prepared they know it from their studies and when this will become a standard in industry then they know it already and it will be much easier to adapt to that so that's what i would say is it about the civil engineering program 
nearly, but I guess you will ask that later on. That's not the only possibility that you have. You go directly after your bachelor degree to industry. Because in Germany, I heard from my colleagues, it's roughly 50% of the graduates that continue to study for a higher degree. It's a master degree. And um, they are very well qualified also for that. So very successful master graduates are coming out of this bachelor program. And not only at universities of applied sciences, but also at normal, or we call it the old universities in Germany, which are more scientifically oriented and not so practically oriented. Yes, not only you go join with to become the engineer, but you can join the higher education to become a master student in such field in Vietnamese, German city or in the Germany. So Dr. Hu, so you are an architect, so can you share about the career path of an architect and what makes a successful architect? Yes, Dr. Hu, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so I would like to add to the points of Dr. Short that uh, yes, similar for the architecture program, students will also get the international degree from the partner university, the Anhan University of Applied Science. It's a famous university, uh, especially for the campus for architecture. It is next to the uh, Bauhaus in the south. Um, so in terms of uh, career path, uh, students graduate from the programs we have the comprehensive skill, as I mentioned in the, the curriculums, in the teaching curriculums. Uh, the student will be able to have the different skill, comprehensive skill from the language, design, uh, technology, the drawing skill by computer, I mean the high tech. Uh, this is a German style education. Um, they have the experience about the international working environment. Then that will be then we make, make them easy to adapt to different uh, working contexts, either domestic or international uh, working context later. Um, not only in terms of working uh, as an architect, but they can shift to work as a planner, the site manager, the um, expert, or even the researcher in the architecture field, right? Because the, the knowledge we provide is not purely design like before, but it is more combined between design, art, uh, technology, and sustainable development uh, trend kind of things. So students basically with those um, comprehensive skill, they can work in different contexts, as I mentioned. Also, they can go further for study master, uh, either in the domestic university or international university abroad. Uh, especially in Germany, of course, the um, partner university, they have quite a lot of uh, master program, not only about architecture, but land, landscape architectures, planning, and other related field also. So the, the career path, the study path, the higher education will be brought for students also. Um, and last but not least, I want to mention is the experience through the internship that the program try to provide the student with current uh, certain network and experience during the internship that maybe make them easier in finding the job in the future. Yes, I, I think that's all I can. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Hung, a uh, lot for your input. Uh, so. Uh, basically, is that you have a lot, a lot, a wide spectrum of the career opportunities for architecture and civil engineering students. So, not you, if you cannot, uh, if you don't want to join the workforce, so you can choose to study higher, even in a domestic or in international school, such as in Germany. So, uh, I mentioned about studying in Germany. There's a lot of questions regarding how the architectures and civil engineering students can study in Germany as an exchange student because this is a very big chance for them to experience uh, the German uh, education and the German style, even the German architects in Germany. This is a very big chance for both programs. So Dr. Job Frank Zucker, so, uh, uh, is there any chance for the student in the civil engineering can study in Germany as an exchange student? Yes, of course, then there. This is valid for all our study programs. Um, first of all, 
every student can go to Germany as long as he can uh, find at the German university programs or modules, lectures that are taught in English. This is not for all of our study partners the case, but it is for our civil engineering program and it's also for the architecture program. They are offering a sufficient number of modules in English language. So students could go anytime to the German partner university and do a few of the modules over there. The thing is, they would have to finance it by themselves. Yeah? That is, when they finance it by themselves, they can, of course, go to Germany and spend a semester or a year in Germany at the university. What we are offering for all of our study programs is that we are getting a very generous funding from the German government through the German Academic Exchange Service. It's abbreviated BAAD. And there we are giving up to 20% of our students of one intake, the best 20% of the students, they're getting a full scholarship to spend at least one semester, which is six months in Germany. And normally we want them to be prepared well for going to Germany. So it will not be in the first year of the technical study program, not in the second year, but it is normally in the last year. So either in the fifth semester or sixth semester of the technical study program, the students can go to Germany and 20% of them are financed by the German Academic Exchange Service by a uh, flat rate for the flights and uh, for living costs. So it's sufficient amount of money to spend this half year in Germany. And uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Joe Franke. And uh, how about uh, the architecture program? Because uh, Germany is very famous for the architect. It's a very long history of architect. So do we have any chance for the architecture student to come to Germany? Dr. Hu, please. I think for this uh, questions, uh, I think I somehow have the same um, opinion with Dr. Jobs when we talk about the partner university that they provide the exchange program for the visual student to go to Anhan University, right, Dr. Jobs? Hello? Yes. For both programs, oh, that's yes. what we talked right. about yes. previously that I, I explained it for both programs because it's the same for all of our programs that yes. we are bringing yes. with this uh, funding from the German Academic Exchange Service up to 20% of the students for each study program yeah. to Germany. And this is true for um, Anhalt, the university, and it's also true for Biberach University that we bring the students there. Yeah, so uh, in a different yes. program, I think we have the same opportunities to go to Germany for a chance. So uh, the mission for the student that we try to study a as well as possible to get a DA scholarship is a great chance for you to go to Germ to go to the Germany for the job study. So this is time for uh, the second game for the second question. You have heard about a, a lot, a lot about the information of the, each program. So now we have to relax a little bit by the uh, for the game. So we continue to the second questions of the game. So so please can you show us the second question of the game, please. So uh, I will read out loud the second question and please choose the most accurate uh, answer for yourself. What are the percentages of civil engineer students receive 100% tuition scholarship for foundation year 20 and 20? Uh, answer A, 20%, answer B, 40%, answer C, 60%, and answer D, 100%. Yes, so, uh, so in the meantime, I would like to answer some question that mm -hmm. the student uh, and audience parents uh, raised for Dr. Job Franke and Dr. Hương. So the first question is for Dr. Hương because when the student hear about the Bauhaus architect, uh, he is very curious about the Bauhaus architect. So can you explain a little bit for the student what is the Bauhaus architect? Okay. Germany uh, and as I mentioned during the talk that uh, the Anhan University of Applied Science uh, the program in the partner university is next to the Bauhaus uh, buildings in the south and the Bauhaus architecture simple understanding is is a functionalism architecture that focus more on the function that the building not only focus on art but the building have to be function well 
the original ideas of Bauhaus architecture is to the to combine the the craft and industry, and the target of Bauhaus architecture is for the the mass product, mass architectures, and functionalism that the, the building have the simple uh, simple forms, uh, simple design, but optimize the, the functions of the, the building in addition to the structure and the craft. Uh, that is the, the basic understanding of Bauhaus architectures. And if you look at the Bauhaus building all over the world, then you will see that they don't have the very uh, details or very art forms, uh, curved forms or some decorations like the, the Gothic or the classical architecture, but they have a very simple form with um, high tech, uh, clear structure, uh, clear forms, simple color, but function well, very well, especially integrate those uh, technology in, in buildings. Is that yes, answer I, your questions? Yes, I think, yeah, uh, it's quite satisfied with your answer. And uh, now one question for Dr. Joe Franke. I think it's uh, from parents. Uh, mm -hmm. He asked about the accreditation of the civil engineering program. And because he won his, his, his child to work internationally, so is the accreditation can helpful and be helpful for him to work in other country? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the, the program itself is accredited by the German accreditation agency. We have a few. And this one is called ASEAN. ASEAN that's the same agency where the um, architecture program is accredited. And in addition, this program is then accredited by the European Association of Engineering Education Programs, the, um, um, how is it called? <laughs> the accreditation logo that they are getting is called U-RACE. So it is uh, the engineering part and generally as an academic university program, both accredited in Germany. And that should be sufficient to work internationally as an engineer. Well, wow, it's great. So uh, on the program in Vietnamese, German city accredited with the European standard. So it's very helpful for you. Uh, you can work internationally or even it's very highly ranked if you work domestically. So we can go back with the question. So uh, can uh, so we will read, I will read the, answer, the question again. So and we will call, give the correct answer. So what are the percentages of the civil engineer students receive 100% tuition scholarship? For publishing year 20 and 20, A 20%, B 40%, C 60%, and D 100%. So since this is your, you are an academic, academic creator of this program, so can you give the audiences the correct answer one? Yeah, this was a very simple question because you see that the answer is already given in the question. <laughs> the 100%, which is the correct answer, <laughs> number D this time, is already given in the question. So. This year, BGU is very generous in providing this 100% uh, tuition fee reduction for the foundation year to every student who is going to enroll in the civil engineering program. Well, it's great. So all the civil engineers student join the program uh, of the this intake, you will see the 100% of the tuition fees for scholarship. Uh, so I think that we have many questions regarding the civil engineering and architecture program today, but since we have a very limited time, so I would like to say thank you for your participation from the two special guests, uh, Dr. Jock Franke and Dr. Hu. And uh, if you have any question and information, you can accept www.vgu.edu.vn or contact with us via hotline 9 a 54 Five two and five four. So thank you a lot for your uh, distribution and thank you a lot. Thank for you very much. And see you. In yeah, the thank you very much. Of the live stream in this Wednesday. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Bye bye.